I'm doing many tasks today. Good morning. It's good to see you out on this beautiful day. Call your attention to our announcements. Uh, first of all, the attendance pads at, it's on the uh, aisle, on the pews at the center aisle, please sign and pass those down. Uh, there's a vote going on for our, what we're going to call ourselves in a common name for the church. Be sure to uh, take part in that. You can do it online. You can do it in person. Uh, <clears throat> this evening, there's a community gathering at 6 o'clock. You'll need to bring a, your own chair. Uh, it's going to be at New Covenant Church, and the uh, easiest way I can tell you to get there is start going to Georgia Bone and Joint, but don't go there. There's a church right before you get there. <laughs> so, uh, but I encourage you to come. Uh, it's the last uh, stop for the Korean delegation here in Cartersville. They've been with us uh, almost a week now. They were here on Wednesday, and it was a powerful experience. Uh, Pastor Kevin will speak more to that a little bit later, too. Uh, next Sunday, we'll be honoring, uh, no, on the 19th, we'll be honoring uh, Pastor Kevin, and I encourage you to mark that day to remember to come in for his 36 years of service. And Vacation Bible School starts in two weeks, and the rest of the announcements you can read, and you need to read and cover those. Now, let's prepare ourselves to worship the Lord. with you. And also with you. Oh Lord our God, we come together today knowing this is the day you have made and we must rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day of Pentecost where we celebrate the birthday of the Holy Spirit coming to us and the church being born. We gather today to worship you and praise you in spirit and in truth. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Holy Spirit and to know that we are never alone. No, never, never alone. So we worship you in all that we're about, all the time we're about. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you'll take your hymnals and let's turn to number 140 and stand and sing, Great is thy faithfulness. <laughs>
have sung of God's faithfulness, and great it is. Now the important question that the Apostles' Creed is a good answer to is, Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From these he shall come to judge the wicked and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers of his righteousness and heirs of life eternal. Those receiving this sacrament are thereby marked as Christian disciples and initiated into Christ's holy church. Now our Lord has expressly given to the little children a place among the people of God, whose holy privilege must not be denied them. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ and how he said, let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. There is no greater honor for a community of faith than to participate in the sacrament of holy baptism. And today, we get that honor. You have a part in this service. If you look in the bulletin, you'll see a congregational response. I'll lead you in that a little bit later. But for now, I want, would like to ask Nicholas Joseph Orton to come forward and bring his family with him. Blessing. Brother Al has some questions to ask you before we do the baptism. Beloved, do you in presenting this child for holy baptism confess your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I do. Do you therefore accept as your bounden duty and privilege to live before this child a life that becomes the gospel? to exercise our godly care that he be brought up in the Christian faith and that he be taught the Holy Scriptures and that he learn to give reverent attention upon the private and public worship of God. The answer is I do. And will you endeavor to keep this child under the ministry and guidance of the church until he, by the power of God, shall accept for himself the gift of salvation and become a confirmed as a full and responsive member of Christ's holy church? And the answer is I will. Praise God. Amen. Water. It's such a common element, but yet it's so powerful. We need it to live. And it played such an important role in the story of our faith. Because you remember it was through water that Moses led the children of Israel out of bondage in, from Egypt. It was through water that the children came to the promised land, the water of the Jordan River, as they entered into that promised land. It was through water, the water of the womb, that Jesus was born. And now it's through water that the grace of this holy sacrament of baptism is bestowed upon this special child of God. Almighty God, send your blessings upon this gift of water and he who receives it. Amen. What name is given this child? Nicholas Joseph 
I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. 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 Beloved of the household of faith, I commend to your love and care, Nicholas Joseph, whom we this day recognize as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that he may grow in the knowledge and love of God, the Father, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you join with me? With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ, that Joey, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, grant that Joey, as he grows in years, may also grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that by the restraining and renewing influence of the Holy Spirit, he may ever be a true child of thine, serving faithfully all his days. So guide and uphold his parents, that by loving care, wise counsel, and holy example, they may lead him into that life of faith, which strength is righteous and whose fruit is everlasting joy and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. And here's his baptismal certificate. God bless. Join me in welcoming Joey officially into the life of the church. Amen. And the ushers will come forward at this time. Let us prepare our hearts to continue to worship God by the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Almighty God, how grateful we are for the blessings of life. Now, Lord, as we return to you a portion of what you have blessed us with, Lord, we pray that you receive these gifts, Lord, as we come to this place to give them in Jesus' name. Amen.
this time I'm going to invite the children to children's time at the altar. And before you're seated, would you please welcome each other to church today? Good morning. How's everybody today? Everybody good? Yeah? Well, today's a very special day. Does anybody know what today is, what we call today in, in the life of the church? Anybody know the name? Pentecost. Yeah. Pentecost. We call it Pentecost. And it's the celebrating the coming of God's Spirit. It's the coolest story because when Jesus went back to heaven after Easter and he went back to heaven, he told the disciples to go and wait for him in the upper room and he was going to send them a gift. Now, they didn't know what was going to happen. But they waited and they prayed and they sang songs and they waited and prayed and sang songs. And then on Pentecost Sunday, on this day, a long time ago, they got their gift. And that was the gift of the Holy Spirit. God sent the Holy Spirit to earth so that anybody who wants God's Spirit, all we have to do is ask and God's Spirit will come into our hearts. And God can be with us no matter where we are. And it came, though, in the most wonderful way. First of all, the disciples, they heard like the sound of a mighty rush. And we're like, oh, like the sound of a, like a rush, a wind going by. And then, oh, this is so cool. Like little tons of fire came and landed on each one of their heads. And when it did, when it did, they were filled with God's Holy Spirit. And they began to be able to, to preach in other languages, languages they didn't even know. So I want you to remember this day. So we got pinwheels for anybody who wants them. And the pinwheel reminds us that when we blow on it, it turns because of the wind, the mighty rushing wind of God. You know, the wind moves. And when the Holy Spirit wind comes through, then wonderful things happen. And then also, I got tons of fire for everybody. Well, real fire was kind of dangerous. So I got Twizzlers, you know, which <laughs> kind of look like tons of fire, right? I think they kind of look like tongues of fire, okay? It's like a treasure. You want, anybody want one? You can, you want one? Yeah, everybody can have one who wants one. They're good to eat. I know I've already eaten three or four. There you go. There you go. The treasure for everybody. <laughs> anybody else want one? We good? All right. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Pentecost. And thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of life, Lord. Bless these children. Be with them. And may they continue to grow in faith and statue, Lord. And we give you thanks for each of them. In Christ we pray. Amen. And let us sing together a beautiful hymn of Pentecost. Breathe on me, breath of God. Stand with me as we sing together.
as we enter into our time of prayer and meditation during the music, I want you to remember that God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. So lift your concerns, your petitions, and your praise to this good God, knowing that evil will not win. God is the winner. God will be here forever and ever and ever. May we bow in prayer. God, may your spirit fall afresh on all of us. For you are the creator of all things. You are the redeemer of all things. You are the sustainer of all things. You are the restorer of all things. How awesome you are, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All power, all knowledge, all wisdom, and life is from you and to you. We are not our own. No, we are not our own. We are your children. All of us are your children. You, God, are the foundation of all our hope. For you are our only hope that we truly have. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit always lifts up and points to Jesus, to you, Jesus, our Savior, our Lord. Only Christ gives us life in the presence in all our days. Holy Spirit, you are the soft breeze that blows, and you're the gale force wind that blows. You're there to comfort us. You're there to counsel us. You're there to give us knowledge and truth. You're there to intercede for us. You're there to light the way for us. Lord, thank you. Thank you in all the ways. Oh, God, as we look at the awesomeness of your creation, the beauty of a sunset, the glory of nature around us, may we understand that you are the creator of all of this. You empower us now to be your witnesses. You've called us to do all things, so you clean us up and steady our eyes so we may put our assurance in you and move forward in faith to be and do whatever you called us to do without worry. Now in these times of life, may we live as kingdom of God's people. This is our ministry, to minister to the children in the here and now, to minister in real and present ways. For the world is our mission field, and it starts within our homes and families and moves into our community and moves from there out into the whole world. The good news of Jesus is too good not to share with any and everyone. So now, we strive to share it to the world. For the world needs to hear it, and we know it's wrong to let a lost friend live without knowing your truth. So make us strong for you, God, and make us real, caring, and personal. We realize that in our end, our mortal body is but dust in the wind, but that is not our end, for we are spiritual beings, and we will be with you forever and ever and ever and ever, and that has no end. So we say glory, hallelujah to you, our Lord and our God, and all that you have done for us and will do. And we turn and we humble ourselves and we lift the prayer that you gave us, Lord Jesus, which we call the Lord's Prayer, as we all say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. scripture lesson this morning is the story of the Pentecost. You'll find in the second chapter of Acts, and I'll read the first 11 verses. Second chapter of Acts. Hear the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit in power. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. 
and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. Now all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our thanks be to God. For obvious reasons, I've been uh, doing a little bit of reminiscing lately and thinking about events in, in my uh, pastoral journey, uh, people I've, I've come in contact with and got to know, and um, just uh, times when I felt my spirit lifted. One of the times that was very impactful to me was in seminary in a chapel service and I've shared this story before so forgive me but it did had it had such an impact on my life it, it was just a, a regular chapel service but we had a special guest a preacher that day Dr. Williams Holmes Borders now Dr. Borders was the pastor emeritus of Wheat Street Baptist Church which was a historic uh, a black uh, church uh, in, in in Atlanta and, and and he came and preached there at the at the theology school and, and I, I tell you, he was, he was an interesting fellow. Very plain spoken, completely unfazed by preaching for some of the greatest theological minds in the world that were gathered there that, that day. But I'll never forget his sermon. And particularly at one point uh, when, he, when he stood and, and he kind of pointed up in, in the balcony at all the, all the professors. Now I need to tell you that when I went to Emory, I was completely overwhelmed. Uh, they were some of the most, some of the smartest, most uh, intellectual people I, I'd ever seen in, in my life, and and quite frankly, uh, I was just in over my head. And uh, but but he looked at those guys up there. He said, and he said, "Do you see all those professors up there?" He said, "With all those PhDs and all those Doctor of Divinity degrees sitting up there," he said, "I want you to know that they ain't nothing but dust without the Holy Spirit of God in their life." He said, in fact, if you want to, from now on, y'all can call them Dr. Dust, every one of them. On Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we often impose the ashes with the words, like dust you once were, and dust you will be. Repent and believe the Gospels. Scripture refers to our lives here like dew in the morning. There in the morning and then God before noonday. In some places of the Psalms where our lives are even referred to as, as vapor, kind of like a, 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 a mist. Now, now, we have to be kind of careful with that kind of, kind of language. Because I want you to know that, that, that our bodies are indeed a temple as the receptacle for the presence of God. And scripture tells us that we are all special. We are all holy. We're all sacred. Every one of us is very unique. Every one of us is a special gift from God to humanity. Every one of us. Not only does scripture tell us that, but, but nature tells us that. Biology tells us that too. And it just blows my mind when I think about how unique you are. Each and every one of you. How unique we are. Our fingerprints are all different. Every one of us, our, our, our retinas, our eye scan are all different. It, your, your eye is different than any other person on the face of the earth. Even our heartbeat. Scientists are beginning to be able to, to, to have a, a heart signature for each of us. The way our heart beats, the way our, our, our heart works is it's unique. It's different just for you, just for you. And not only that, but the very building blocks of who we are, the, our genetic makeup, the DNA, every one of us we know is different, different from anybody who's ever lived, anybody alive now, or ever will live. You are that unique. You are that unique. 
You are that special. You are that wondrously made. Every one of us. That's why I, I get so upset when, when I hear people speak ugly to one another. We need to treat each other with, with the respect, with the dignity that every man, woman, boy, and girl deserves. Because every, each and every one of us is a special gift from God to humanity. We need to remember that. But even and above all of that, which makes us just incredibly special and holy, is the indwelling of God's Spirit, which is in each of our lives. On July the 4th, 1776, the members of the Continental Congress meeting in Philadelphia signed the Declaration of Independence. And with that action, the American Revolution was launched and a new nation was born. How ironic it was that we read that on that very day, King George, King of England, made this entry in his diary. Quote, nothing of any importance happened today. Without the benefit of 24-hour news and the, uh, and the cable networks and the satellites, he had no idea what had actually happened on that day, how it would impact his life and how it would impact the, the world. I can say the same thing about this day of Pentecost some 2,000 years ago. How about A.D. 30, 120 followers of a man named Jesus was gathered together in Jerusalem. And how at that moment, the gift that Jesus had promised arrived as the Spirit of God filled each one of them and marked them with tongues of fire. And that Spirit was just opened up and made available to all who would receive it. How on that day, the church was born. But no historian outside of Scripture saw anything significant on that day. But we know that something significant did happen. Because we know what happened to those 120 disciples. I mean, after all, they were just a handful of rather ordinary men and women, if I could use that word. There were some fishermen, there were some housewives, some, a former tax collector, some, some farmers, some servants. That, yet through those ordinary people, God built a church which has lasted now for over 2,000 years. A church that in less than 300 years, that small and significant Jewish sect became the official religion of the entire Roman Empire. And how today the church of Jesus Christ, Christ circles the globe. How do they do it? How do those 120 followers in the year 30 AD, how do they do it? They did it because they came in contact with God's spirit, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit filled them with gifts and fruit and power. Christians, the event of Pentecost, the event of God's spirit coming to earth, for many, many people, it's like what King George said on that day. Nothing of any importance happened today. But we know differently. We know that Pentecost is one of the major festivals of the church here today. We celebrate the coming of God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, into the lives of men and women. Today, we celebrate the birthday of the church. Today, we celebrate the coming of God's Spirit to all who will receive it. But let's be honest. If you didn't come to church today... And really didn't even come to, to a certain type of a church. Or, or, or you didn't read it in your daily devotional. Or you didn't read it uh, on a church calendar. I don't, know, I don't know why anybody would be reading a church calendar besides me. If you didn't read it, read it there. You, you probably wouldn't have known that today is Pentecost. But you know what? Today is an important day. Today is just as important as Christmas. Just as important as Easter. Theologically. But for some unknown reason, this festival, this holiday, is, it goes by almost unnoticed. Why, why is that? Maybe because we have a difficult time getting a handle on the, on the Spirit of God, on the Holy Spirit. Maybe we don't understand exactly what happened on that day. Maybe talking about the Spirit is not as easy or as sweet as talking about, say, Christmas, you know? About talking about the, the baby born in a manger and, 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 and the angels singing in the heavens and the wise men bringing gifts and shepherds tending their flocks uh, by, by night. And so we don't. But, but we must. 
We must celebrate Pentecost because it reminds us of the coming of the Holy Spirit. It reminds us that God's Holy Spirit is here. Filling our hearts and our lives. Maybe it doesn't get so much attention because we haven't found a, a, a way to, to commercialize it, you know. We don't turn Pentecost into a cultural extravaganza or into a, a national holiday. And we in the church really don't know how to truly celebrate. And so it goes unnoticed. But so important. We need to understand that that, that same spirit that fell at Pentecost is here in this room today. There's a contemporary Christian song called The Same Power. And that song talks about how the same power that caused the blind to see, the same power that caused the lame to walk, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you and lives in me and abides in this room. It's the same presence that was moving over the face of the earth when God created the world in which we live. It's the same spirit of God that walked the earth 33 years ago, 33 years teaching, healing, proclaiming the love of God for all people. It's the same spirit that is within us. Secondly, we've got to celebrate Pentecost. We must, because we're not only celebrating the presence of God, but the power of God who came to earth that day. The power of the Holy Spirit. We gave the pinwheels out today, and I hope you'll take one. So, so you know, every Pentecost, I, I like to do something a little different to, to help re remind you of the importance of this day. That pinwheel will move if the wind blows with force upon it. Just like we will move, we will talk, we will serve, we will heal, we will love when the Spirit of God is blowing in our lives. Now, you know, that might, might scare us a little bit. Because the power of God can be experienced in different ways. The power in general can be experienced in different ways. Al, Al made uh, a, a mention of the, of the Korean folks who were here. They experienced the, the Holy Spirit in a, a different way, I think, than you and I, I do. They, they came in, into this room on Wednesday afternoon and and they came and they, they laid, uh, 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 and knelt here by this altar, that lectern, and they laid hands upon it. And they cried out to God with a loud voice. And they were praying to God. They were asking God to allow forever the word of God to come from, from behind this pulpit. And the word of God to be heard and received in the pews. They screamed and hollered and cried and laughed. And it was very, very loud. And most of us would have been a little uncomfortable being there. See, power can, can be unleashed or it can be harnessed and channeled. The energy in 10 gallons of gasoline, for instance, can be released by dropping a, a match into the can and get an explosion. Or that same 10 gallons can be, can be channeled through the engine of my little Hyundai in a controlled burn and transport me 350 miles away. Explosions are spectacular and needed, but controlled burns have lasting effect and staying power. And the Holy Spirit works both ways. At Pentecost, it came exploding on the scene. And his presence was like tongues of fire. And thousands upon thousands were affected by that burst of God's power. But God also channels that same power through the church today, through you and me, through worship and fellowship and service and prayer. And that spirit makes us strong. Through our baptism, we obtain the staying power of God to see us through all the ups and downs of life. Oh, it can be noisy and dramatic, or it can be quiet and unassuming, but it's just as powerful. You know, I like the story of the, what happened when they were trying to build a bridge over the East River in New York. They, they were going to build a, a bridge there, and, and, and as they began to, to build and, and look, they realized that right where the main, one of the main pylons needed to be for the bridge, there was a, a boat that had sunk. And it was a hull of the boat right, right there in, under the water. And it had been so encased in, in, in mud and so forth that 
they couldn't move it. They had some equipment, but they couldn't get it up. They couldn't get it unstuck, and they didn't know what they were going to do. So one of the engineers had a brilliant idea. He said, you know, this river not only flows, but this river also has a tide that's low and, and high. So said, why don't we why do this? Why don't we come in here at low tide when the tide's the lowest? attach cables to that sunken hull, bring those cables up, tie them very tightly to big giant barges here in the river. And that way, when the tide comes up, it will bring with it that the hull of that, that boat with it. And then it'll just float on out to sea where it can cause no danger. See, God's Holy Spirit can be like that tide. It comes in quietly, maybe slowly, but it comes to us with enough power so that we might do the job that God has called us to do, led each of us to do. There is power, there's a force. But many of us, for many of us, it's untapped in our lives. God will give us the power to do exactly what God has called us to do. And the last thing I'll say is that the Holy Spirit unites with, with our spirit so that we might experience the righteousness of Christ in our life. We do that in two ways. First of all, Christ can, that, that spirit convicts us of our sins, shows us that we really aren't as good as we think we are. And that in that realization, we fall upon our knees at the foot of the cross as we bid Christ for forgiveness and mercy. And then that spirit comes with God's mercy, with that righteousness of God that washes away our sins. As Paul says in Romans, for all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. For you didn't receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. So when we cry, Abba, Father, it is the spirit himself bearing witness for our spirit that we are children of God. It is this spirit that comes into our life, into the church, that allows us to spread the love and the mercy, the forgiveness and the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to all who we meet, if we will. You're the church. You're the most unique and most powerful force on the face of the earth today because you're endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've been a Rotarian for a number of years. When you join the Rotary Club, they ask you to do a little speech. They ask you to tell what you do for a living. You know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, I'm an architect, I'm a dentist, I'm a lawyer, uh, I'm a preacher. Well, this one guy named Russ Blowers uh, from Indianapolis, he joined the Rotary Club, he's a, he's a preacher. And so when he gave his little speech of what he did, he didn't just say, I'm a pastor, I'm a, I'm a preacher. He said this. He said, well, he said, I'm with a global enterprise and we have branches in every country in the world. We have our representatives on nearly every parliament and boardroom on earth. We're into motivation and behavior modification. We run hospitals, feeding stations, crisis pregnancy centers, universities, publishing houses, nursing homes. We care for our clients from birth to death and really before birth and after death. We are into life insurance oh, and fire insurance. We perform spiritual heart transplant. Our original organizer owns all the real estate on earth plus some galaxies and constellations. He knows everything, lives everywhere. Our product is free for the asking, but there's not enough money to buy it. Our CEO was born in a small town, worked as a carpenter, didn't own a home, was misunderstood by his family, hated by his enemies, walked on water, was condemned to death without a trial, and rose from the dead. And by the way, I talk to him every day. That's you. That's the church. So on this Pentecost Sunday, let me ask you a question. Will you open your heart to be filled with God's Holy Spirit? Will you, will you realize that you can do anything that God calls you to do? Because the will of God will never ever lead you where the power and grace of God will not sustain you and equip you. When God's fi Spirit fills your heart, things happen. Things happen to people, things happen to churches, and things will happen to this world. As one preacher put it, it's time. It's time to open up to the mind-blowing, heartwarming, life-changing power of God. 
The power of God can invade the body, inflate the mind, swell the soul, lift the spirit, and make us more than we ever imagined. When God sends forth his spirit, miracles happen. Barriers are broken. Communities are formed. Opposites are reconciled. Disease is cured. Addiction is broken. Cities are renewed. Races are reconciled. Hope is established. People are blessed. And you know what? Church happens. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we pray that you would send your spirit upon us this day. May we open our hearts to the indwelling of that Holy Spirit. May we know that from this day forward, that you live with us and in us. Lord God, your presence and your power is with us from this day for all days. Lord, may we indeed be the church. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to turn now to page 13 in your hymn books. As we receive Holy Communion before we leave this morning. Would you pray with me, please? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to It's right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to take the communion elements. And if you'll turn where the bread is on top and if you'll remove that white tab. For this is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. May we consume this together. Amen. And if you turn it over and access the juice part by pulling back the tab. For this is the blood of Christ, which was shed for you. Amen. Partaken now of bread and vine, may the grace, love, mercy, and salvation of the Lord be thy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we close our time together as a response to what we've heard today by singing a beautiful little chorus. 
This little light of mine is on page 585. If you like the words, would you stand with me? May we sing together. place filled with God's spirit in your heart. Go forth from this place to share the love and grace of our Lord with all whom you meet. Go forth from this place and be the church. Go forth from this place and realize that the presence and power of the Holy One lives in you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>